Skino's kitchen. Today we have a very, very special guest who is a currently working uh, within a school in our local area. Her name is Lauren and has come to do a week's work experience. Now, when you do a week's work experience, you normally spend your time making cups of tea, but we really worked with Lauren this week to make her experience the best that it could possibly be. Possibly be, sorry. And she has, I hope, really enjoyed it. So yeah. she's really excited to be coming on to Skino's Kitchens and we're gonna have a little bit of a theme and mm -hmm. do pot noodles because you're thinking about university, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, I am. So that should be good. Yeah. So how mm. did you come to kind of want to be here? Because I remember you appeared mm. out of nowhere, really. Yeah, so um, you and Mike sort of did a presentation sort of thing to my business class. And then I saw that and I was like, okay, so this looks like a really cool company. Should I should, you know, email them and see if I can work with you because I know I've got work experience coming up. So I was like, okay, I might as well just give you guys an email and see what happens out of it. Because I knew a lot of my friends were doing online work experience, but Online work experience. Yeah, yeah I'm, not, I'm not too. Yeah, I don't feel like you actually get to know what the work is actually like through doing it online. You don't get to know what work is. Well, <laughs> yeah. course, we spend our time sitting in front of laptops, but mm. work experience is about experiencing what it's like to work in a company mm. and meet yeah. individuals. And so this is your second day now. Yeah, isn't second it? day. Yeah. Second day, and you're on like camera on I the know, show. It's bad. Isn't it? <laughs> it's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But when we did that speech, and one of the reasons why we were so excited about having you down to do your work experience was the fact that Mike, and I mean, I, I'm not going to lie, I got chucked into that to suddenly talk in front of a school of people, but Mike put a lot of effort into helping to motivate and, and uh, introduce the working life to that group in your mm. class. And yeah. you were the only one out of that entire class yeah. that emailed Mike. Was mm. it just you thought to do it or did someone give you what how did that even come about i think yeah it was literally just my own initiative really i just was thinking about the work experience and i didn't know what i wanted to do i just knew that i was interested in marketing and that's something that mike talked a lot about so i was like oh, okay i might as well just give an email really and i'm quite surprised no one else in my class actually did email oh, well, it's probably because mike's um not the most attractive of fellows, so <laughs> he might have scared him away. Sorry, I know he's sitting in a small cinema, that's why I'm taking the car of him. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I mean, you've been here, like I say, two days. Um, we've gone through quite a lot. You've been really thrown in the deep end when it comes to yeah. the marketing side of things. So talk mm. about some of the stuff you've done recently with like George and the camera and David and all uh, these kind of things. Yeah, so first came in, you gave me a demo as well. And yes. Then, um, David also gave me... Um, sort of tour of everything and I met everyone they were all really lovely and yeah it was just really nice and then David went through some of the um things the more technological things like yeah. the cameras and all of that sort of thing because I didn't really learn anything about that so it was quite interesting to learn about that definitely things. and I remember I walked in so I walked into the um like the media hub downstairs and David's sitting there and he's got all these different drawings of different resolution types and talking about sensitivities of microphones. And, mm. and I remember about three hours later, he turned around to you and said, so what's the importance of this? And you just yeah. went boom, boom, boom. And he's yeah, like, yeah. no one gets that. <laughs> Let me get you a drink. So you look, do you want a can of drink? Oh, or thank you. Like a Diet I Coke? I love or, a Diet Coke. Please. Diet Coke? Thank you. I will, no, I won't join you. Um, but <laughs> we're all friends here. We have cleaned the top of the can, so feel thank free you. to have a drink out of that. So, um, when it comes to marketing though, what mm -hmm. I love about it is you can take an idea, mm -hmm. you can take a concept and you can put spins onto it to kind of create um, a perception or an understanding of a product or yeah. how you want to make someone emotionally connect, emotionally connect to a piece of content. And mm. when you work in the more creative side of it, because I think when you think of marketing, what was your thoughts on marketing? It was just adverts just, and yeah. mm. putting stuff together. but. Mm it's actually what you realize is what goes into making that content the components that you've been learning about the camera equipment the editing software the people like george with the videography technology uh, uh, understanding and mm. it's all about those key components to kind of come together but what we love about you is your willingness to try mm. and your willingness to just go for it and do it yeah. i mean trust me mike has been trying to get some people on camera for months <laughs> yeah. and they don't want to do it you've <laughs> just come in here and just swooped it straight away which is awesome so this is a cooking show yep 
Um, but we're going to do a cooking show with a little bit of a difference today. So um, mm -hmm. I figured as you were thinking about university, mm -hmm. what is very important is about how you get into the cuisine of the halls of residence. Now, I spent some time in halls of residence, not because I went to university, but I just had friends there and I'd go and visit. And, and yeah. most of the time it was go out, get crazily drunk, come home and cook a pot noodle. Now, mm. I'm going to teach you how to cook a pot noodle. Okay, cool. You, I've heard a rumour, I've, yeah. I've heard a rumour that you've never tried a pot noodle. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, I've never tried a pot noodle. You are so, in for a treat. I know, yeah. It's going to be the first time. It's I picked two of the best flavours I could. Mm -hmm. Well, it wasn't necessarily two of the best flavours. It was what was in the petrol station on the way to work this morning. It mm -hmm. was buy one, get one free. So I got beef and oh, tomato mm -hmm. and Bombay bad boy. So the Bombay bad boy, George, you are going to taste this and tell us how hot it is because I am not going to put that anywhere near my body. Um, but first thing you do is you take your water and you put it in your kettle. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm just teaching you this yeah. now because cool. what's going to be really important is that you know how to do this even when you're very <laughs> yeah. intoxicated. So now the key mistake that everyone makes when they're making a pot noodle is not plugging in the kettle. Uh, so I've made sure mm. that my kettle is firmly plugged in, nice and pat tested recently from our uh, electrical people that came in. So thanks for that, Mike. And you press the back of this and it starts to boil. Mm. Okay, now. Nice. It's quite a quick process to make a pot noodle, so you yeah. want to make sure that you're you're on it because you don't want to lose any of that flavour. But the first thing you do is you open up the pot, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. let's put it together. I'm, I'm you can open up this one. Yeah, sure, nice. So you'll find that in a pot noodle there is a little sachet. Now some people choose to throw these sachets away, mm -hmm. but in my opinion, it's like the garnish. It's what yeah. really adds to it. So unleash what's inside on this one. That mm -hmm. is going to be something that I would imagine is extremely hot. Yeah. Okay, so. While we wait for this to boil, mm -hmm. have you kind of thought about any universities you want to go to? Is there any, would you be one of these um, people that moves away and never talks to their family again? Yeah, or? I'm not sure really. I mean, I've looked at a few ones, but it's just like, they're like, oh, you AAA or A to IA. It's like, oh, do, am I going to get that? You know, it's, I mean, it's been quite difficult with like GCSEs and stuff. Obviously, I didn't do them. And I mean, it, it kind of helps because when going through GCSEs, you learn what revisions techniques are good for you and it's, it's a big learning curve as well so especially for your a levels definitely but so what that actually I that feel, part of your mm. education just got pulled away from you didn't yeah it? and i feel like it is quite difficult as well because i've had so much time online but then last year i had like no time like but this year i did so do you know what that's mm. that's really that that's genuine that's really hit me because I, yeah. one of the when you're at school part of school is sitting there doing those exams sitting there mm. and and focusing on something and having something to get yourself to the next stage so mm. i'm so glad that you've come here actually because that mental preparation for something like this is really really important so mm. um working with with mike and working with me and george and david mm. i hope that we've helped you in that because that is it's really mm, sad to see that so many kids have had that part of their life just taken away from them mm. so yeah. when you was at school was they doing like kind of video based learning and all that kind of stuff at for yeah, you. I mean, well, it didn't really go on for us. I mean, we broke up in March and then from then on, we didn't really, I think a lot of people didn't really have any guidance whatsoever from the teachers because it was more like, oh, you're done now. Like, we're going to decide your grades. You know, you can go. And I mean, especially in COVID, you couldn't really do much. So it's just sort of sitting around, sort of planning what you wanted to do next. And I knew I wanted to do A-levels and stay on at Birchwood. But, oh, that's cool. Yeah, so, but then... We I did for I think it was about from January time to about March when it was all online and that was a bit of a shock definitely because it's it's di different learning so when you're in you can always ask your teachers questions yeah. and you know you can ask your peers and stuff like that but it's so much more difficult online but, definitely you don't yeah. have that kind of human interaction and the whole yeah, kind yeah, of social definitely. element of school and mm. stuff and that that is that is a real sad thing. Mm. So, when you are socially gathering in your halls of residence and the kettle is boiled, simple thing. Now, there's a line inside, all right? So, that mm -hmm. line is really important because if mm -hmm. you go past that line, it's a bit watery and it's not uh, very nice. So, you mm. want the pot noodle to be a bit of a nice uh, emulsifying dinner. Yeah. Um, so, we're going to pour that in. It bubbles because I don't know what toxins are in this. Um, and then you get to that line. So, feel mm -hmm. free. Crack on. Just make nice. Bombay bad boy. Ooh. Oh, the other thing is don't throw away your bit of tin foil. This is like the most important part of the pot noodle. So there you go, it bubbles down a little bit. Nice. Fill it up a bit more. A bit more, yeah. Otherwise that will literally take the skin off your mouth. <laughs> and we're good. Right, nice. so what we need to cool. do now is we need to put said piece of tin foil on top mm -hmm. of the pot noodle. Now I believe this is to help the residual heat and steam 
cook the noodles nicely, mm -hmm. um, but we don't want to stir it yet because if you stir it, it's like trying to stir a house brick into uh, sort of water. It yeah. just kind of needs to dissolve a little bit here mm -hmm. at the moment. So um, I noticed as well, well, I did notice because I was doing it, you've actually starred in the Terrific Tuesday as well, haven't you? So yeah. the Terrific Tuesday that's gone out this Tuesday. Yeah. Well, we're Friday now, so this Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And uh, how was yeah, that for you? Yeah, it was, it was really good. I mean, it was a big like jump in the deep end sort of thing. <laughs> I haven't really done anything like that, but... Yeah, it was really fun as well, working with both of you as well. So it, it was really good, yeah. Oh, awesome. Mm. So we should be able to get to a point now, if you take your trusty fork, mm -hmm. and we'll give this a stir. So from my experience of pot noodles, the best thing to do is, right, stuff it down inside yeah. it and then lift it up. And you see like all the noodles come up to the top. And you oh, can yeah. see, you can sort of start soaking the water in. Yeah. And it starts to go around a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. And then once you start getting it around a little bit, this is yeah. where we need to put in our famous sauce. So for the beef and cool. tomato, it's basically a sachet of ketchup. Mm -hmm. um, for the Bombay bird, <laughs> I'd rather do that one if I'm on it. Do you know what, George? Mm. I was thinking we could give Capes that new name, couldn't we, the Bombay bad boy? <laughs> <laughs> but if you then put your um, sachet of sugo uh, into the pot noodle, now watch out with your eyes with that one. I don't yeah, know what it's going to yeah. do to you. So. Uh, and then keep stirring it. Give it a nice little stir. Mm -hmm. Make sure, again, you haven't thrown away your little bit of tinfoil because that is extremely important. So, George, I know you can't really talk much because you haven't got a mic on, but I, I, I assume you've had a lot of experiences when it comes to pot noodles. Of course I have, Yeah, <laughs> you've had lots of experiences. You should have been doing the cooking show today then, George. Should have shown us. Now, what was it you said about 3 a.m.? What's the one you have? Super noodles? Uh, Perry salt, uh, salt on super noodles. Perry salt on super noodles. Wow, mm. that is that is absolutely brilliant. So now you've stirred in your um, radioactive fluid. Yeah. Um, take your tin foil and then again just place it over the top. Mm -hmm. Cool. Nice. So if you were to give three words, so one of the things that Mike taught me when it comes to marketing is mm -hmm. um, language. So the language is extremely important in terms of what you use to describe a product. So for example, if I was to say to you, I don't know, Lidl, mm -hmm. what three words come to mind? Uh, food, uh, supermarket. Supermarket, um, maybe low cost, yeah, something like that. Low cost, yeah. yeah? Mm -hmm. If I was to give you, I don't know, the Ritz. Mm, more expensive, like, Posh. Posh, yeah. Yeah. Just words like that, really. Yeah. Exactly. So mm -hmm. having the right language helps the perception of what that product or that brand is. But also mm -hmm. those language, those those words that are used don't necessarily mean mm -hmm. how well a business does. But yeah. they do have that kind of um, emotional connection to a character. So if you was to give Pulse Cinema's work experience yeah. three words, mm -hmm. what would they be? Um, probably quite inspiring actually because it's you know helped me think of what I want to do. Cool, so um, inspiring. So another one, it's quite honestly quite fun. Like fun. I've had a lot of fun doing like working stuff with you doing Terrific Tuesday and this. Cool, way. it's been it's been really fun. And oh, I'm trying to think of another word now. Don't mm. take your time. Mm. We've got time. Yeah. We're waiting for that. So so we've got inspiring. We've got fun. What else? Mm. Just an enjoyable experience. All enjoyable. Really. Yeah. Well, that, do you know what? That is all we wanted for you when you came down is mm -hmm. we we never in a million years wanted you to just come down and make tea for people, get stuck yeah. in the corner and told to file something that doesn't even matter. Mm. We wanted you to come down, to be inspired, to have fun and enjoy the experience and go home to your family, go to the school and really show them what is capable by showing your initiative to get into a position like that because that's what yeah. it's all about in life it's all about taking a chance going for that chance and getting in there and you've done that and we're yeah. really really proud of you so oh, well thank done you. Yeah. these will be ready now so oh, if cool. we give it a little stir and uh do you want to take the beef and tomato one, yeah actually? I'm, I'm not gonna take this one i was gonna say i'll give this one a go and see see what it's like but mm. Mm. good yeah <laughs> very hot very spicy, so I'm expecting to... <laughs> <laughs> this is really hot. Yeah. Good? No, it's really nice, yeah. Awesome. So, yeah, pretty good. Now when you're at university, when you're making a pot noodle, you'll mm. think of Pulse Cinemas. Yeah, of course, yeah. Thank you so much for coming, Lauren. You've been mm, an absolute thank you for legend. Me. 
And guys, if you want to join us in Skino's Kitchen, make sure you're subscribing, make sure you're clicking that bell icon and getting yourself involved with what an awesome platform this is. Thanks a lot, guys. Oh,